Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name's Clint Button, and I'm a granite sculptor. Uh, this is a, well, a little bit of history lesson and just a small project. A um, hundred years ago, you know, 1900, early 1900s, late 1800s, uh, infant mortality rates were um, much higher, and, uh, and people didn't have photographs. Uh, you know, they, they people, it was expensive, and so photographs were pretty limited. And one of the ways that people in the memorial or the stone carving business made money, especially over in Europe, as they were catering towards uh, people from America that might have money to travel or things like that, is they would do what's called a memento. Now, a memento, this is a, an original memento from probably the early 1900s. Um, it's probably alabaster. We think it's a little too tight grain to be marble. And what would, what a carver would do is they'd get a small piece of stone and they would just create a small memento, a likeness. They'd do a bust of a young boy or a young girl and they would do it as an exercise. And then they could put it on the shelf, put it up for sale, and if a tourist went by and said, wow, that likeness really reminds me of my son or our daughter, they would buy it and it would go on the shelf because you know there were a lot of children that may have never had their picture taken. And so this becomes um, a way to preserve their memory. So this is a memento I bought at a yard sale, oh, I think in Rutland up near Barrie. And uh, just to have it on the shelf, but to have a, you know, real memento. And uh, we've got a project that's ongoing. And family wanted a very generic um, young boy. And so, but they didn't have anything at all for, um, for reference. So I did a quick memento, and uh, she wanted it very stylized. She was bringing in some ideas that were uh, almost almost cartoon. They were, weren't quite, you know, realistic. And so did a quick memento. Well, right now we've got a open studio event coming, and they wanted something to put out. And I don't have many things as small as what they want to display uh, going to a nearby airport. And so... Um, but they like they like this. This fits the specs in terms of size. But I got to do something with the base. This is just a quick sketch model, maquette, nothing fancy. And uh, these are just on here to support the main two by that's going up through. So I've got to make something for a valence to cover this up. So we're going to go dig into the wood pile and mill some probably some cherry. Got some some cherry that I think I'll cut, make a few boards and. Uh, put it together and make it pretty so we can put it out. But this is what a memento is in terms of, of memorial pieces and uh, a lot of people don't understand that but that's what this is. This wasn't meant to be, it may have been a specific child that they had a photograph but it probably was just something that was done just as a piece on speculation or on spec and they put it on the shelf and it probably looks sort of like someone enough to remind them of a young boy that they had and so they would buy it for a little bit of money and take it home and put it on the shelf and and help remember their their son or their daughter so um but hang around see what we can do with this lumber make this thing look a little prettier and uh and uh before i throw it back in the bucket and uh make something else with it Okay, don't mind the dog. She just wants to be on my YouTube channel. Got some old cherry here. It's been laying around by the wood pile for a few years. Sapwood's all gone. And uh, so I just cut a section out. It should fit under my bandsaw. Let's go down and give it a try. Well, I've got it in smaller pieces. I don't think I'm going to win any awards, but let's get this mill down and get it flat and see if we've got enough here, if we've got to cut a little bit more. I'm hoping this will be just enough.
trim the base for the plinth. Uh, just did it seven by seven. It's just that's what we was close to, and so trued it up real nice on the old saw. And now we'll veneer it. Getting everything ripped down to size. The big old saw looks pretty good for old rotten piece of wood out laying in the dirt. Been there for oh probably five years. So uh, we should be golden. Trim this up and make it pretty. Okay, now is more fun stuff. Okay, I uh, I like to cut dovetails just because it's cutting something else. It's cutting wood, cutting stone, cutting meat, cutting anything. I just love carving stuff. So I'm going to cut dovetails on these corners here. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. I like doing it. Um, it looks good. But uh, it also will appeal to people in a different way. If they're perfect, they'll look fake. They'll look like you cut them with a jig. And anybody can go to the store and buy a jig. Nobody cuts them by hand. If they're slightly imperfect but really close, people will see they're done by hand. And it, it's, it's a way to demonstrate what can be done. So setting up my fence, the width of this, they got a hangover, one for the pins and one for the tail and uh, um, so I'll set it up with two thicknesses lock down my thing now I'll back this up and cut off four pieces like that we should be all set trimming out the dovetails real easy you mark them inside a B C D Cut the tails first, then we'll lay out the pins and cut them off. A couple saw cuts in, and chop it out with a mortise chisel, bench chisel. This really isn't hard. Um, uh, Kloss, I forget what his name is. Guy on the internet, man, saw him back years ago on a video, and I'd done dovetails, but he was like, oh, just relax and do them, they're a lot of fun. And you just do them, and you do. The, the angle is the one I put on it, you know. The reason these dovetails are a good joint is because they actually work and the more you cut the better you get the better you get it turns into a contest you want to make perfect ones so we'll trim these out and uh, have a really pretty little base then we'll put a top on it there's some real simple dovetails just one on each corner fits decent it's not perfect like a machine will make but it's pretty good if I'm going to try to convince somebody what I can do, i got to show them I can do good stuff. And this will speak to a lot of people. There's a lot of people that notice dovetails that cut them and, uh, when they see. So I'll uh, work on this a little bit. I'm going to try setting it on there, glue this up, and we'll put a top on it. And there it is. It's not attached yet. It's just set on there. But... Trim that out, dovetails on the bottom, I'll uh, glue it all up, probably glue it to these two bodies that are just built because they're screwed from the bottom and it's easy to resolve it, get it off, whatever, and uh, we'll uh, get a little bit of varnish on here, polyurethane, whatever there is in the pile, and through the magic of video, we'll be back in a few minutes. Now I've got it finished off with some, uh, I guess it's a water-based poly, uh, just what I've got. It came out pretty good. Oriented the top to the center line here, which the bottom's a little skewed, but that's no big deal because we're trying to make this appeal visually. People are going to glance. I really don't want this line to be crooked or these lines to be crooked. So we're, uh, now it's time to Build a crate, make it fit so it's easy to load and unload. And through the magic of video, now we've got a small crate. Now, I could have just hammered together something pretty basic, but I really had to have something about what I did, the minimum of what I needed, because I don't know who's going to be handling it. 
and they're going to have to open it, remove the momentum, and then display it, and then put it back in and, and ship it back to me. So um, I'll point out a couple things about this. Uh, I did put a coat of poly on it, just what I had. Same thing as on the base. Just in case it gets wet, this will keep this top from cupping as much because it's only screwed to here. Here on the front, it opens up. Got simple hasps. They uh, are easier to tension uh, than some other things. And so, and then they provide a handle to open it on each side. Um, there really aren't any dimensions to this. This is a. Uh, um, this is just made to fit the jaw, made a little oversized. Uh, it's really easy to remove these cribbons. These are cut fancy like this just because they were fancy scraps. So I cut in half and make people think it's something special. Uh, you got to remember when people open a box, they're always curious. And so if you make a box that's cool, they're going to want to open it. And so that's, that's part of, you know, how you present your work. You want to make sure they they like it now this is also suitable for uh, shipping uh, it would be very easy to add two or three screws here on the top on this line to hold this shut to ship it to where um, if it was going to a gallery or a show out of state or something where I had to actually ship it off um, I could do that and then you know pat it up all inside real well but then they could just take out two or three screws as instructed and use it, reuse it. Uh, there's also an overhang on the front. If you see this, that's to provide vertical clearance for these hasps because they've got to have some room. If you jam this in between other crates and those are, those are compromised, that wouldn't be good. So this provides a little bit of overhang. I didn't do as much as the bottom. That's how big the piece of scrap was. But this is all scrap lumber. And this is one of the things that's, it's what I was trained to do because you take scrap and you use it for important things like a pointing machine armature or a crate for a small piece of sculpture. And this wood that was just going to go to the scrap pile, now all of a sudden you, you're, you're honoring it, you're taking care of it, you're not wasting it. And uh, so uh, that's just what it is. So. Nice little crate. Now we'll ship this thing out, take it in, drop it off in a couple days, and it's going to the airport, and we'll try to get some video from the airport to uh, uh, add to the video, and then it'll come home, and no telling what, if this will ever get used again or not, but um, just a crook crate. This is the Open Doors studio display at Greenville Spartanburg Jetport Airport. Um, got a couple dozen artists involved and uh, we'll have an open studio the weekend of April 23rd 24 22nd 23rd I believe in the two dates I don't know if you can click on that in the video we've got painters and turners all types of jewelry and uh, this is all from artists in Spartanburg County. Mixed media, ceramics, small portrait work, bunny, poster again, mixed media, Water lilies. And then, of course, the best piece, in my opinion, <laughs> a little memento. Right at the airport, in front of the tourists, the way it needs to be. So, that's what we do. But come out to see this at GSP if you happen to be in the area for uh, weekend, April 22nd, 3rd. Going through Spartanburg County, there's uh, at least 25 artists participating. But, uh, once again, my name's Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio. Thanks for coming in.